Welcome to this tutorial on the difference between two population proportions. Data that is expressed in terms of a percentage or a proportion is analyzed and presented in a different way than data that has a mean, but some data, in particular categorical data, can only be analyzed as a proportion. First, we will look at how to draw a confidence interval estimate on the difference between two proportions, and then we will continue with hypothesis testing for the difference between two proportions. The general formula for interval estimation is always a point estimate plus and minus some margin of error. Here you can see the point estimate is p bar 1 minus p bar 2, and then to get the interval we add and subtract a margin of error. In order to calculate the margin of error, we will first need to calculate the standard error of p1 minus p2, and that is calculated by taking the square root of p1 times 1 minus p1 over n1 plus p2 times 1 minus p2 over n2. The standard error notation is shown on the left hand side of the equation as sigma subscript p bar 1 minus p bar 2. You may remember the standard error for the difference between two means was sigma subscript x bar 1 minus x bar 2. So now we have p bar 1 minus p bar 2 instead of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 since we are dealing with the difference between two proportions and not two means. So to calculate the interval estimate for p1 minus p2 we take the point estimate plus and minus the margin of error and the formula looks like this. As you can see in this formula that the left hand side has the point estimate for p1 minus p2 using p bar 1 minus p bar 2 and then it is plus and minus that standard of error and the standard of error is a z value we always use z for proportions so we have a z value times the standard error. Let's take a look at how we would create a confidence interval using this formula. Okay so here we have an example of two plants, plant A and plant B and let's say we take a sample of 250 parts from plant A so n1 is 250 and we take a sample of 200 parts from plant B, so N2 is 200. We are interested in the number of defective parts, so we find that we have 25 defective parts from the sample we take from plant A and 15 defective parts from the sample we took from plant B. We must now determine the sample proportion. P bar will be the sample proportion. So to calculate P bar from plant A, that would be p bar 1 and we would take 25 divided by 200 and we get 0.10. We can do the same thing for p bar 2 and we divide 15 by the sample size of 200 and we get 0 0.075. So the average proportion or the sample proportion for plant A is p bar 1 and that's 0 0.10 and p bar 2 would be 0 0.075. Now let's say we would like to construct a 90% confidence interval on the difference in the proportions from plant A and plant B. Here is the formula again from the previous slide. Plugging in the numbers we get 0 0.10 minus 0 0.075, that's the point estimate. Then we have plus and minus 1.645 times the square root of 0 0.10 times 1 minus that, so that's 0.9 divided by 250, right, n1, plus 0 0.075, that's p bar 2, times 1 minus p bar 2, so that's 0 0.075, minus, 1 minus 0 0.075, so that's 0.925, divided by 200. Now, where did we get the 1.645? And that is our z of alpha divided in half value. If you recall from previous tutorials, 1.645 was the z value that we used for a 90% confidence interval. You should know the z values for 90%, 95%, and 99% confidence intervals, or else you would have to look these values up in the z table. All right, after we plug in all these numbers, we get 0 0.025 plus and minus the z value 1.645 times 0 0.02828, and that gives us 0 0.025 plus and minus 0 0.0466. And that gives us a 90% confidence interval on the difference between P1 and P2. So the lower limit would be the lower number and the upper limit would be the upper number. And between those two numbers, 
we are 90% confident that the true difference in the proportions of defective parts is. We can also draw inferences about the difference between two population proportions by conducting hypothesis tests about P1 minus P2. There are three forms for hypothesis tests. The first form looks like this with the null hypothesis as P1 minus P2 greater than or equal to D0, and the alternative hypothesis is P1 minus P2 less than D0. D0, remember, is the hypothesized difference between two population proportions, and this is usually zero. Since these hypotheses focus on one particular direction, this type of hypothesis test is called a one-tail test, and since the area of focus in the alternative hypothesis is the less than side of the distribution, then this is called a lower tail test. Another form of hypothesis test shows P1 minus P2 less than or equal to D0, and that's in the null hypothesis, and P1 minus P2 greater than D0 in the alternative hypothesis. Since the alternative hypothesis is what we are looking to find evidence for, and this alternative hypothesis has a greater than sign, then this is a one-tailed upper tail test. And finally, we have H0 and HA with equal to and not equal to signs, and here we are testing to see if there is a difference between the two population proportions with no focus on a direction. So this would be called a two-tail test. After we determine which form of hypotheses we are using, our next step in hypothesis testing is to calculate the test statistic. The test statistic for the difference between P1 and P2 is shown by this Z formula. We see P bar 1 minus P bar 2 in the numerator, and that we can get from the sample proportions for population 1 and 2. But look at the denominator. We have P bar under the square root sign. That P bar refers to a pooled sample proportion from both populations 1 and 2. So we have to calculate that pooled sample proportion separately. And we do that by taking N1 times P bar 1 plus N2 times P bar 2 over N1 plus N2. This will give us a weighted average for P bar 1 and P bar 2, or a pooled sample proportion. And that is going to go here. So the formula is really a two-part formula where the P bar part in the denominator has to be calculated separately. Now let's look at our example that we used before for the confidence interval estimate. We had the proportion of defective parts from plants A and plant B denoted by P bar 1 and P bar 2. Let's use a 0.05 level of significance to test to see if there is evidence of a difference in the proportion of defective parts from the two plants. We can see the sample proportions are different. For plant A, the sample proportion is 0.10 or 10%, and for plant B, the sample proportion is 0.075 or 7.5%. But is that enough evidence to conclude that the true population proportions are different? Our first step is to state our null and alternative hypotheses. Since we are looking to find evidence of a difference between the two proportions, then we are not focused on a direction, and so the null and alternative hypothesis would be equal to and not equal to. Formally, they are written like this, as H0, that's the null hypothesis, colon, P1 minus P2 equal to zero, and then we have HA, the alternative hypothesis, colon, P1 minus P2 is not equal to zero. The next step is to calculate the test statistic. Here is the test statistic again. It is a z-test, and we have to calculate p-bar in the denominator first. So that would be n1, 250 times p-bar 1, 0 0.10, plus 200, that's n2, times p-bar 2, 0 0.075, divided by 250 plus 200, that's n1 plus n2. And we get 40 divided by 450, which is 0 0.0889. Now, plugging in all these numbers into the test statistic, we get this. And you can see that the 0 0.0889 is put here. So now, after doing the calculations, we get 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.02828. And that gives us a test statistic of 0 0.8841.
Now we need to look up the critical value. We are using a 0.05 level of significance, so alpha is 0.05, and since this is a two-tailed test, we split alpha in half and we get 0.025. To look up the critical value in the z-table, we look in the middle of the table for the alpha divided in half area, 0.025, and then we look to the left and we find 1.9, and we look up and we find 0.06. So our critical value is plus and minus 1.96. So now we have calculated the test statistic as 0.8841 and we have a critical value of 1.96. Now we are ready to compare the test statistic with the critical value. Looking on the distribution we need to first mark off the critical value points here and then look to see where the test statistic of 0.8841 falls and it falls around here. Since the test statistic falls between the two critical values and not in the tail areas, then it is in the non-rejection region. Our next step is to come to a statistical conclusion, and that would be do not reject the null hypothesis. There is no evidence of a difference between the proportion of defective parts from plant A and plant B. We can also solve this problem using the p-value approach. To use the p-value approach, we also need to calculate the test statistic, which is 0.8841. And then we look up the p-value in the z-table. Since the table only goes to the hundredth decimal place, let's round 0.8841 to 0.88. So using 0.88, we look on the left-hand side and find 0.8. And then we look at the top and find 0.08. So that would be 0.88. And then following across and down, we find the p-value is 0.1894. Now we are ready to solve this hypothesis test using the p-value. This is a two-tailed test, and the number we just looked up, 0.1894, is in only one tail area. So we need to double the p-value before we can compare it with alpha. 0.1894 times 2 is 0.3788. The rule for the p-value approach is reject the null hypothesis, reject H0, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. Otherwise, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Alpha is 0.05, so 0.3788 is greater than 0.05. And our statistical conclusion would be based on the rejection rule, so we would say do not reject the null. There is no evidence of a difference between the proportion of defective parts at the two plants. Notice the result using the p-value approach is the same as the critical value approach, and it will always be the same because we are really doing the same thing, just using a slightly different approach when we look up the test statistic to decide whether it provides enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. The methodology shown in this tutorial works for both proportions and means in very much the same way, and for both one population and when we are comparing two populations. That's because the fundamental principles of hypothesis testing are the same. If you are still unclear about hypothesis testing, then go back and review the introductory tutorial on hypothesis testing for one mean, and it will help lay the foundation to better understand this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned something.